Hey, welcome to the Love Will End Abortion Advanced Sidewalk Training Webinar on the topic of how to utilize baby registries and baby showers. All glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm Jim Havens, Director of Love Will End Abortion, lovewillendabortion.com. Uh, very excited to be on this webinar with you tonight. I think this is going to be a very, very powerful presentation. Um, we're going to get to the nuts and bolts of how to utilize baby registries and baby showers. Um, but first, we're going to cast some vision around that. And I think one of the best ways to cast some vision around that and actually dive into the details as well is to really hear about the impact of baby registries and baby showers um, in the words of those who have been served by them. So we're going to share a little bit, not just us sharing stories about people we've helped in this way, but we're going to actually let those people who have been helped, a couple of them are going to share, um, share with you in their own words tonight about their story from the sidewalk outside of a abortion center, encountering um, the sidewalk ministry there, and then being offered a baby registry, being offered baby shower, and, and how that all played out. So you're going to actually hear in their own words how that worked out. I think that's going to be extremely powerful. And then following up on that, um, we're going to give you the nuts and bolts. Very excited to have some special guests with us tonight to help us to walk through those nuts and bolts. These are the, the two that have been doing it on the ground in, in the work that I've been part of with Love Will End Abortion. And that is my wife, Becky Havens, um, who has been really learning um, all the nuts and bolts of how to do the baby registry and the baby shower we've, as we've just kind of learned out of necessity as we've encountered moms, pregnant moms in need outside of these local abortion centers and, um, and offered to help and offered, offered resources in this way by doing baby registries and baby showers. And so we've had some baby showers in our homes. Um, we've, um, I know Becky and I, we, we've had a couple in our home. Um, Lorraine White, who's going to be on with us as well tonight, she's co-director of ROCK, that's short for Rochester Love Will End Abortion um, in the Sidewalk Ministry up in Rochester, New York. And she, um, she and her wife, she, she and her husband, uh, John, they have had baby showers in their home as well. Um, we've done several, many different baby registries. And um, uh, and so we're going to, again, share the nuts and bolts. They're going to really give you more of that um, because that's really uh, something that they've been more invested in, actually, than I have in terms of the logistics and how that all works. So they'll be on after we have those testimonies tonight. And then we're going to close it out with some Q&A. So anything that's on your heart and mind tonight, anything related to this topic or anything else, you can throw it in. We'll get to it in probably about the last 10 minutes of the hour tonight. And you can do that by just going to the control, control panel and going to questions and typing in any question or comment there. And we'll be able to see that, but other participants on the webinar will not be able to see that. So we'll keep it anonymous unless you put, unless you type your name in, then we can share that. Otherwise, we'll just make it anonymous in terms of whatever your question or comment is. Um, but just in terms, just a, some short remarks of introduction from me, I, I just wanna make sure that we remember um, we always bring it back to, um, to to the beginning here, which is what is most important. Like we can't really walk with pregnant moms in need unless we first go out and encounter them, right? So let's remember to put first things first here. We've got to build up the local sidewalks outside of our local abortion centers. Again, keep that vision in mind that the empty sidewalk outside of our local abortion centers ought to be unacceptable to us. There should be nobody ever going in and out of those places when they're open um, without somebody there as the hands and feet of Christ in prayer and in loving outreach to them. We owe them that much, right? We know that they're in need. We know where they are. Let's go out and encounter them. One person, one small group of people, we can't do it all by ourselves. We've got to do our part, take a hour a, a week or whatever it is that we can do um, but then we've got to see if we can help to build out those sidewalks um, throughout the entire year. 40 days for life is awesome. Let's keep it going for 365 days for life and try to build that out. Actually, our next advanced training webinar next month is going to be on that exact topic, getting into the nuts and bolts for how to achieve full sidewalk coverage year round outside of your local abortion centers. We're going to get into 
logistics with scheduling software and how we actually fill people into those slots. There's lots of different um, ways to do it. There's some best practices and principles around that that are really important. So that's going to be on November 19th from 8 to 9 p.m. And um, watch for an email invitation coming out to you soon on that. But as far as tonight, let's keep that in mind that um, when we're talking about walking with pregnant moms in need, we got to first go out to encounter them. So we got to get out to the sidewalk. We got to build out the sidewalk in our local area. Um, also, let this also be a time where we just, we just you know, allow that lie that we all know is a lie, that lie that, um, that, that is so popular from pro-abortion people who they may call themselves pro-choice. Whenever somebody says pro-choice though, just ask them what is the choice they're in favor of? And the answer is abortion. So therefore they're pro-abortion. They wanna parse words on that sometimes, but we're talking about people that are in favor of abortion being legal, in favor of it being legal to kill children in the womb and exploit the pregnant mom in need by lying to her and pretending that somehow it's a good thing for her to participate in killing her own child, it's not a good thing. It hurts her, obviously, in many, many ways. It's a horrible idea. We have to break through our desensitization that allows us to kind of just act like it's normal or to even feel bad about like advocating for, um, for the, the end of abortion, right? We shouldn't feel bad about advocating for the end of abortion. We should feel really, really good about it. It's the right thing. And we've got to come off that way to encourage others like this is actually a no-brainer. Abortion ought to be illegal. We're talking about killing a human being. We're talking about turning the heart of a mother against her child when she's in need. Instead of walking alongside her and encountering her and saying, what are your real needs that, you're, that, that are going on in your life? And how can we help you address those? And certainly hurting your child or killing your child is never going to be helpful to the real problems that she has. So we need to get away from the lie of abortion. And one of the ways that we need to do that in, um, in talking with people is not let them get away with any sort of nonsense, this lie about people with pro-life convictions only care about people after they're born. We know that's complete nonsense. It's actually the other way around. It's the pro-abortion people that don't care about people before they're born. We care about them all. We love the mom. We love the abortion worker. We love the abortionist. We're there for all of them and for everybody driving by, even if they're being rude to us, we are there in love for them. That's who we are. We are Christians. We are there to be the hands and feet of Christ, to be people of love, to will the good of others and not to ignore it like um, the parable of the Good Samaritan, but to engage like the parable of the Good Samaritan, to see our neighbor in need and to go and engage and help our neighbor in need. It starts by the encounter on the sidewalk but then it moves into um, this area of empowerment, right? So we want to help the mom address the real needs in our, in our life. Oftentimes there are real material needs and that's where baby showers, baby registries are so powerful to be able to offer those and then to be able to come through to keep our promises and do an awesome job fulfilling the baby registry and the baby shower. Um, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal way to bless a pregnant mom in need and get her very, very excited to turn her heart towards her child, to get her very, very excited about um, uh, her pregnancy and the birth of her child and, and, and parenting that child. So um, let's, let's go right to the stories. Um, this is gonna be the most powerful part for sure. We're, you know, we're just kind of adding around the edges to this, but there are some really important logistical nuts and bolts that we are gonna give you tonight about how to do the baby registries and baby showers, but you gotta hear it. Um, from the people themselves who have been helped in this way. So our first, we're going to give you two real stories tonight. The first one comes from Joanne. She's a grandmother, actually, that was there with her pregnant daughter outside of a, a Planned Parenthood abortion center. She's going to tell you the powerful story and then tell you the impact of the baby registry. And she did have a baby shower as well. And she told us this story in February of 2020. Um, the, the, her daughter had not given birth yet. Um, but she has since, and it's been just beautiful to continue to walk with this phenomenal family that we are friends with now. And it all started by encountering them on the sidewalk outside of a Planned Parenthood abortion center in Rochester, New York. So um, you may have seen a story with her sharing the story before that we've edited up and kind of put some music behind it and all of that. This is going to be a little bit different. We went back to the raw footage to kind of pull out 
um, more about the actual baby registry, the baby shower. So even if you've seen some of her story before, this is gonna be a little bit different and it's just the raw video. It's very, very powerful just hearing her in her own words, no music behind it, anything like that. Um, so let's see if I can pull it up for us here and, uh, and get Joanne on here with us. Let's see. Okay, here it is. My name is Joan Troutman. I have a daughter who is 20 years old came to me about eight months ago telling me that she was pregnant and she didn't know what to do. Um, she struggled with keeping it, having an abortion, keeping it, having an abortion. At the end of all that, she did decide to go and have an abortion. She said she wanted to go back to school and the only thing, the option she had was to go have an abortion. We, we got there, uh, went in, signed in, there was a bit of a wait during that time. I'm a cigarette smoker. I came back out to smoke a cigarette. And I met a bunch of people outside um, that were telling, wanting to talk to me, telling me about their alternatives to what my daughter was about to do. I came back in and was telling her about um, you, actually, Jim, um, that if she decided to um, not have an abortion that there are services out there for her and that there are people that are willing to help i went in and i talked to her about that she still said that she wanted to do it so finally the doctor called her and she got on the table got all prepped and i guess she thought about it and she decided not to do it she broke down on the table immediately i told her okay come on let's go inside i'm happy that she did not want to do it um, she got dressed, we, we, we called a ride for her to come, and for the ride to come for her, for us to leave. And on the way out, I think it was you, Jim. Was it you that talked to her again? Mm -hmm. um, not really sure, because it's been a while ago what you said to her, but she wasn't convinced. She wasn't convinced at that point that you guys would be there to help her. Um, honestly, I wasn't even convinced that you guys would be there to help. But when the time came that I knew that my daughter could not go have an abortion, that it was too late, I contacted your wife and told her um, my daughter's still pregnant. I found out it was a girl and that I was really excited and the help that was offered, if there was anything that could be done, we're open to the help. I don't want to get emotional. And from that point on, help just started coming from people we don't know, people we never met. They sent my daughter everything the baby could need. She don't need anything. Um, I got a dining room full of boxes right now of everything just waiting for my granddaughter to be born and y'all just took the worry y'all just took the worry out the pregnancy because everything that y'all did was gonna fall on me because my daughter's daughter's father is not there he has no plans on being there and my daughter had nothing. All she had was me. I don't have anything. So the pressure was taken off. And I just believe now, I just really know that there's still the people out there. Um, I didn't, I didn't believe that before. I just knew, I, now I know there's good people and I feel like Miss Becky is like forever part of my family. Like I'm gonna keep up with her. I'm gonna send pictures. I want her to be at the first birthday party. I just think about, I'm so waiting on my granddaughter. Like I got five grandsons and if she hadn't went through with that, she was gonna be getting rid of my granddaughter. Y'all gave me my granddaughter. Because I don't think that, I don't think that if you guys weren't in her ear that she wouldn't have not went through with it. I think she would have went through with it. And 
I mean, they say you can't miss what you never have, but I've been wanting a granddaughter since forever. And now I'm getting her. She's been blessed with so much. Like she got so many people loving her and she's not even here. Like, it, it's just amazing the people that love her. And then the baby shower. Let's just talk about the baby shower for a minute. Never met any of them people. They don't know me. They don't know my daughter. But they showed us so much love. And they talked to us like they have been knowing us forever. I got numbers from people telling me to call them if I need anything. Call them if the baby needs anything. Call them. And I don't think they gave us their numbers just to be passing time. I really think they will be there to help if we need them. They made me feel like I, I got something to fall back on if times get hard with me, my daughter, and this baby because I'm in it just like my daughter. I'm gonna be grandma and fill in the shoes of father. So it's just nice to know that there's some genuine people out there that I can call and say, hey, listen, this is going on and this is the struggle. Do you know of any help? And I can 100% guarantee they're gonna try. They're gonna try to find it. And I just did not, I've had abortions. I've had a couple of abortions. And I really wish Jim that I had to listen to the people that was walking up and down the street trying to stop me from going into that same clinic. But I didn't listen because I didn't believe. You know, my thought was, yeah, you're, who's gonna buy the diapers when the baby get here? You're not gonna do this and you're not gonna do that. And I just really wished I had listened to what you guys were saying and gave it a chance. So now here I am with my daughter and we listened. And my daughter's pregnancy has been stress-free basically because she don't have anything to worry about she just gotta wait on her baby she just gotta wait on her baby because everything else has been done for her um and it wasn't done in a flip-flop fashion they did they gave her the best they gave her the best of everything there was no the, the cost was not even a consideration. You can just tell by the things that were sent. These people spent thousands and thousands of dollars, yeah, for my granddaughter. And I just don't know how to say thank you because I don't think there is, I think the, the best way for me to say thank you is to stay connected and, and let you guys watch my granddaughter grow from the point that when we were walking in front of that clinic to the point like her first day of school, you know, she's got her book bag on her back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And she's getting ready to go to her first day of kindergarten. And just to see the progress and know that you guys, 90 something percent of that was because of what you said to her and, and the promises that were made and the promises that were kept. say thank you to that. In my community, the community that I come from, even right down to my church, they wouldn't have extended their hand the way that you guys have extended your hands. Um, and she might have got a few things here and there that some other child might have um, previously enjoyed, but everything that she has, has it's her own. It came in a box. It came from people out of Texas, people out of California, people out of Michigan, just people out of Ohio, just all these different people from just different walks of life just giving to a family that they've never even laid eyes on. How do you say thank you to that? I will always have something good to say to any young girl that comes my way and thinking about going to that clinic and making
make up your own mind, but know that there is real help out there. Those, the, the people that you see out there trying to tell you that there's an alternative way, they're for real. They're they're for real with helping you. It's it's not a joke. It's not it's not a show. It's for real. They are real people and really trying to help you. We thought of not calling. I had to call because the burden was gonna be so much. I had to reach out. And honestly, truly, Jim, I didn't expect much. If I'm gonna be really honest, I didn't expect much. And what I got was, I just got everything. We ended up with 2,147 diapers, Jim. Come, come. <laughs> From size newborn to the time that she's gonna be putting on panties. And then we got the panties. <laughs> You know, we, we just got everything so we can focus on loving her. There, there is going to be no stress. There is going to be, oh, she need this, oh, she need that. And we can just love her. We can just love her. We can just love her. We don't have to worry about where this is coming from and where that is coming from. My daughter has a whole year and a half to get herself together. And all she got to do is when the time comes and the baby needs, just go through the box, pull it out, and the, the stress is over. It's there. What do you think about your granddaughter being named after you? <laughs> I love it. Mini me. It's just mini me. It's just mini me. It's mini me. Mini me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to spoil her rotten gym. And I've already told Jory to accept it. It is what it is. My baby, it is what it is. She's gonna be little Joanna. Any final message that you have to the the people that are on the sidewalk, reaching out in love and being there in prayer, and showing up in the cold and the heat, week after week. Um, any any final message to them? Please stop what you're doing. Please know that there, for all the people that give you a hard time. There are people like me that are so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that you guys were out there. Please don't stop. Please don't stop. Don't stop what you're doing. It's working. It's working. It's working. Don't stop. The love is needed. It's needed, Jim. It's needed. There's a lot of babies that are being reported that need to want the mother's feet to know about the love. It's all about the love. It's just all about the love. And they need to be, they need to know that it's people that don't even know that love them and their baby. And I'm part of the family for life. You're not getting rid of me. So I'm part of your family for life. Becky's going to get tired of me. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for sharing You're welcome. Your story. You're welcome. <laughs> I hope my All right, that was... That was Joanne sharing her story. So awesome. What a blessing um, to hear her share her story. That was her sharing it back in February. Um, her daughter has since given birth. And uh, again, been a, been a joy to continue uh, the friendship with, with her and the family and uh, to continue, continue to walk with them um, even now. So um, what a blessing. So keep them in your prayer. And I hope it impacts you that these are real people. Right, these are real people. When we're talking about abortion and we're talking about thousands of preborn children uh, being killed every day and uh, thousands of pregnant moms in need being exploited every day just in the US alone, um, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. But what can we control? One thing we control, we can control, is whether or not we show up, whether or not we help build out those local sidewalks in front. Of our local abortion centers. Again, let us be convicted that the that that it's unacceptable to have an empty sidewalk without the hands and feet of Christ present outside of any abortion center whenever it's open. Year round, we've got to have um, the church present on these sidewalks year round, every single hour that these places are open in prayer and loving outreach to everybody going in and out, the moms, the dads, the uh, workers, the, even the abortionists, the people going by, we're there for them as well to give a little witness. Um, it all starts there with our encounter there. 
And from that encounter, great things can happen. We show up in faith and love and God will use us. And one of the tools at our disposal is we can offer a baby shower. We can offer a baby registry um, and a baby shower. Um, so things are a little bit more difficult now with the baby showers in terms of some of the stuff with it, with COVID. Not everybody's looking to maybe get together as closely right now still at this point. So baby showers um, might not be as accessible or, or as wanted at this moment, but the baby registries can still work. And just so you understand how the baby registries work, we're gonna get into the nuts and bolts in just a little bit, but just so you understand this part of it, um, we offer the baby registry. If the mom says yes to that, then what we do is um, we help her put the registry together and then she's gonna be getting, when people buy things off that registry, they get sent right to her and then she's waking up each day and getting boxes sent to her each and every day that are just very encouraging to her, right? Think about how encouraging that would be. Again, uh, my wife, Becky Havens, is gonna be up here in, in just a little bit along with Lorraine White, co-director of Rock, short for Rochester Love Will End Abortion, and they're gonna be sharing the nuts and bolts. Um, and, and many of you that are on here, I'm guessing have been part of Joanne's story in terms of helping to provide in that baby registry and baby shower that we had for her, um, had for her daughter and for her family. And, um, and maybe you bought a gift, maybe you were at the shower, I don't know. There, there's a lot of people on the webinar tonight um, and people can plug in to those registries from all over, wherever you, you might get an email from us when we have an opportunity to do a registry for a mom. And so like she was saying, she's getting things from all over the place. Um, so if you've been part of that, thank you, thank you, thank you. See the impact that it makes. It's so, so powerful. These are real people. Let me share one more real story from a real person with you. Um, this is Sade. She's going to be sharing her story here. This story um, she shared with us and we recorded it um, back in June of this year. And she's one that this was right in kind of the height of uh, the COVID and everything. And so, um, so we did a baby registry, but she did not have a baby shower. Um, so she's going to talk a little bit about, um, she's going to share her story from uh, going to her abortion appointment that day, turning away, and then the impact of the baby registry. Then we're going to dive into those nuts, nuts and bolts. But um, but here it is. This is Sade, uh, a pregnant mom um, that we encountered on the sidewalk. And here she is sharing her story. Let me pull. My name is Sade Hughes. I'm a mother of two now. I have a 14-year-old and... I have one on the way last winter. It's really, really cold out. Um, and I got up and I went to an appointment and I already had guilt about this appointment. Um, as I was turning into the parking lot, I saw Jim standing outside and he was like, you know, trying to redirect those going to the clinic. Um, I didn't want to miss my appointment, so I still went in and as I was waiting in the lobby, I just looked out the window and he was still out there standing in the cold, still trying to, you know, redirect people to come, you know, instead of going to the clinic, but to come over and talk to him. Um, I looked out the window and I was just watching him. I'm like, it's really cold and he's really out there, like, trying to talk to people. I went into the appointment. I went, I was called, checked in, went to the back and I didn't feel right. I don't know if it was a sign from the Lord or guilt from seeing that man outside or just because I knew that I probably was making a big mistake. And it was either the lady told me, the doctor said, it's either now or never because I was pretty far. It was like three months. And I'm like, well, I can't just I, I can't just say I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I already had that feeling that it wasn't the right feeling anyway. So it was nothing to just say, well, you know, you just made this much easier for me. No, I'm not gonna do it. I felt relieved when I came out there. Um, like a weight was lifted off of my chest and I, I felt fine. I didn't feel like I had any regrets when I left that clinic. Um, I got in my car, Jim was still outside in the cold. And I just, before I left, I'm like, I feel good. I seen him, I rolled my window down, gave him a thumbs up and said, I didn't do it. <laughs> and that's when he said, well, can I just have a word with you? And I, 
like, mm, okay, sure. So um, after talking to Jim, um, he basically told me that he said, you know, there's help. Um, he told me about his wife said there's an organization that's willing to help you with anything the baby needs or what you may need through this pregnancy. This is what they do. This is what they're here for. It's not like a charity event. You're not a charity. You know, it, it's not for that. It's they, this is what they do. They will help you. You know, um, he gave me his wife number. Well, actually, he gave me his number. I contacted him, and then you know, he turned me over to his wife Becky. He was awesome. She's awesome as well. And she helped me get set up with baby registry um, in terms of getting the things I need, um, showing me the ropes, what I need to do. I didn't know anything about registering for baby stuff. I never did it before. So she was very supportive in that department, um, making sure I had everything I need. Um, I knew what I was doing. Any questions, comments, concerns, she was there to help me out the whole way. Um, we planned for a baby shower, but unfortunately the pandemic hit, so that didn't happen. But still, my son has everything he needs. And um, a lot of people were supportive. People I don't know, people that don't even know me, um, really sent a lot and it was a blessing and it, and it, it was out of love and I just thank everyone. And how excited are you for the birth for your to hold your little boy? I'm really happy. I'm really excited. Now I'm counting down days, you know? We are renovating the house and getting ready for him, you know? I never thought I would have a son and I have one now and I'm excited. I can't wait to meet him and I can't wait to tell him how he was brought here. When you get old enough, I'm gonna tell him. God created that, just like he created our life. And if ours is valuable, why isn't theirs? Have your baby. <laughs> Love your baby. Today, um, a mom that we met outside of a, a Planned Parenthood abortion center, and that was her sharing her story back in June with us. So, uh, so blessed for her to um, be so generous as to share her story on camera um, with us. And, um, and, and it's a great opportunity for us to hear um, from real people in their own words about what happened and, and the impact that the baby registries and the baby showers had. Um, but there's a lot of other insights. I'm sure that you're pulling away and listening to, to, to them speak um, their stories in their own words, um, just tremendously powerful and helpful um, to hear what was going through their minds and in their hearts in those moments and beyond. Um, so it's very simple, right? We have to be to we have to be on the sidewalk to encounter these pregnant moms in need. We know where these places are. We've got to show up. Um, we do that, and again, the basic sidewalk training and all of that. You can find all of that. There's videos on that. Other videos that we've done. Go to levelandabortion.com. You can find it all there if you need to figure out how to get started and going to the sidewalk. But if you're already on the sidewalk and all of that. Um, just remember this tool about offering the baby registry and the baby shower. Um, you know, I offer it pretty generously out there. I bring it up quite a bit when I encounter moms outside of these abortion centers. Um, and not everybody wants a baby registry or a baby shower. In fact, it's quite rare that somebody um, does turn away and, and then take you up on it. Um, you'll see, I, I've seen moms turn away and then there's only maybe a fraction of those that will say yes to the registry and the baby shower. Um, a lot of them, they aren't looking for material items and things like that. All that they really needed was kind of someone to be there for them, someone to help them um, to, to think a little bit more about what's going on here and to be a light for them, the hands and feet of Christ to them. They just maybe need a nudge of grace in the right direction. And we see these moms turn away. Sometimes they turn away, don't share their story with us at all. We wouldn't even know. Charday was one of those where she rolled down her window like she said at the end and said, hey, I didn't do it. And then she came over and spoke with me. But how many moms, they just leave and they don't even tell us. Um, but out of those that do tell us and talk with us, um, some of them um, will be open to more help. And, and what I say is we will help you as much as you will let us, basically. You know, with the baby showers and the baby registry, it's a great way for us to just love on them and bless them abundantly and to show them how much love is out there for them, how valuable they are. It's a great way to, um, to give that um, gift to them and, a, and a, this great sign of love for them. Um, and then there are other ways to help pregnant moms in need 
um, that we're not going to get into today. It's not the scope of today's webinar. Maybe in a different one, we can get into how you can help um, with other sorts of material items that wouldn't really fit into a registry or baby shower, um, transportation issues, housing challenges. That's a big one. We can, we can, we've been through all that stuff and we've got some best practices on that as well, but we're not going to get into that at this point today. Um, but one other thing it is important, I, I think, to remember that I want to make sure to point out before I bring our special guests in is just that um, if you hear their voices, the, these ladies, um, it's very natural for them to go on and to share their stories with those around them in, in our communities, right? That to go back into the community and to share some of their story with others and to share the local resources that are out there and available to be this good leaven in the community this ripple effect into the community, right? So um, this is what we want to grow, right? But it all starts by getting to the sidewalk, building out our sidewalks. We've got to be there to initially encounter them. That's what I really want to make sure everybody understands. Um, and then, yes, nuts and bolts of how the, the registries and the showers work. So let's bring in our special guest here to drill down into those nuts and bolts. Um, we've got with us today, um, let me just see if I can uh, pull them up here. Here we go. This is going to be, um, this is my wife, uh, Becky Havens. Let's see if we can get her in here. And then also, um, there's Becky. Hey. And then we're also going to bring in here um, Lorraine White, co director of Rock Love Will End Abortion. And um, you guys can take it away. Uh, just given the nuts and bolts, I'll pop, pop back in right at, right at the end for Q&A with you. But um, that's an, another thing to just keep in mind. At any point, um, guys, just feel free to uh, go ahead. Any questions or comments that you might have um, right for the end of the webinar, we'll get to those. Just go ahead and type them in on your control panel under questions, and we can get to those right at the end. But go ahead, guys. Uh, feel free to uh, take it away. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much, Jim. And I just want to say thank you to Jim and Becky. They're such a tremendous asset in this ministry and their generosity and their humility and just their friendship is so invaluable. And you could see it in the, the faces and the voices of the people who gave their testimony. And I will never get sick of hearing Joanne and I'll never get sick of hearing Charday talk about the impact. Um, so I just want to thank them and thank all of you for being on the call. Um, as we started thinking about how to relay this information and the insights that we've gained just through trial and error, it came to mind several principles or best practices that I'll kind of go over in a nutshell. There's five of them that kind of came to mind. And then Becky's gonna go through the real nuts and bolts about how do we actually go ahead and do this? Like what are the mechanics of it? So when you're thinking about having these baby registries or baby showers, um, I would say keep it simple, number one. Number two, Brands matter. I'll tell you a little bit about that, but um, there is a real power in pro-life brands and there's a real uh, detraction in brands that we just don't want to support. Uh, get the word out. How do we do that? How do we tap into the community of people who really want to love on this, these moms? Don't skimp. You heard Joanne talk about how impressed they were that the gifts were truly ones that were um, authentic and beautiful and special and you know not just hand me down so to speak and we'll talk a little bit about that and why and then personalize when you can you you saw in the testimonies people really go through these um, psychological hurdles to get over connecting and, and, and humanizing their baby because there's so much bombarding them to say that it's not a child it's not a baby but their gut really tells them that it is so we talk a little bit about how to do that so keeping it simple just like it sounds in the registry, um, moms need the basics, right? So they're gonna need the diapers, they're gonna need the car seat, they have to have a car seat to come home from the hospital. So keep it really simple, beautiful, simple, um, good quality items, but keep it simple. Have a, a, a baby boy registry, a baby girl registry, and a neutral registry, and you know, have some items that are indulgences in there, but so many women sometimes, especially if they're new moms, they wanna like go overboard with all the real fancy trendy things. And then guess what? They end up getting just those things and you know, where's the diapers kind of thing. So keep it simple. Um, brands matter. So um, obviously, you know, it's kind of a tangled web when we talk about what brands are pro-life, what brands are not, but we know that there are specific brands that are not 
Um, so we avoid things like um, the target registry. And instead, we typically use Amazon and yes, the platform, I'm sure there's a lot of things behind the scenes, but the platform itself is very user friendly. And in it, we can select brands that we know are um, brands that are wholesome and brands that we know would be um, endorsing the uh, pro-life ministry. Getting the word out, this is really important. Now, money is never usually an object because people are just coming out of the woodwork, literally. The um, body of Christ really wants to do this. In fact, sometimes people, even for the smallest thing, we say, oh, we had a mom today turn away. The first thing they wanna know is how can they help? What can they buy? What does the person need? Um, so getting the word out, how can we do this? Becky, will get into this a little bit, but start recruiting everybody around you. They will then recruit from there, whether it's social media, church bulletins, get the word out and start getting this prayer network going and then get this network out that will actually help contribute to the registry. Um, you, and you'll be surprised, and Becky will talk about this, I don't wanna steal her thunder, but how fast it goes and how, how many people really step up. Don't skimp. I think this is one of the most important things, right? So these moms, you see how real they are. They're like a friend to us. They're not just this enigma of this person who goes in there and they could be, for, but for the grace of God, us, right? So, so surround them with love, surround them with, with um, an illustration that they matter. It's not that they're materialistic. It's that there's a connection now that I matter. I'm special. My child is special. How powerful was it when Joanne was saying, all these gifts, you know, it, it just took away this burden from them. Even though it's material items, it has a connection to being able to care for the child. And when you're in it and you're in that crisis, that's what you need to have sort of taken away and taken off of your, um, your mind and, and being able to be taken care of. Also personalize when we can. We found this is really special. So when they, if and when they know the gender of the child, so making that something that's personalized, or we had one mom that had the name selected and we had a wall hanging made for them and other people have embroidered pillows for them. So it makes it real. So all of a sudden it's not just this idea, it's a baby, it's their baby, they've named the baby and it really becomes personalized. So, so these are some of the principles and I, I kind of went through those fast because I want to give Becky time to go through the nuts and bolts of it. But keep in mind, those are some of the things that um, are the underpinnings of making a baby registry or a baby shower when it's in person um, successful. Keeping it simple, brands matter, get the word out so that you can have a lot of network of people putting in their special talents, right? Some people, we have a wonderful um, friend who makes uh, baby diaper cakes, beautiful things. Everybody has a talent they bring to the table. Some people do decorations and what have you. Um, don't skimp, so do the most beautiful things. It's, is it someone you love, your daughter, your sister, your friend, and personalize when you can, because it really makes it something special that they can hold on to, and it's very meaningful to them, and they, they, people have told us how they kept them and shared with other people, so, so that's some of the best um, practices and principles that we've learned. There's many, many more. We could probably do many of these episodes on this, but that's kind of a tee up for um, Becky to kind of go through what are the nuts and bolts of how to actually go about doing this. She's done many of them and has gotten very, very good at it. And I'll let you kind of go through the, the mechanics of it, if you will. Yeah, thank you so much, Lorraine. Um, there's an awesome community of people in Rochester that all pitched in for these. Um, it might be the same in your area or this might be brand new, but um, it took a lot of trial and error and we had the moms. So it was kind of at some point, um, a lot of the moms, it's funny how it will happen is um, they might come back to you in three or four months and you might say, and they, they might say, oh, we met you, you know, down at the Planned Parenthood like three, four months and you might not really remember, but mm -hmm. she's, she's in her mind, but somebody offered a baby shower and sometimes you connect it and sometimes you don't. So it really matters to, to let these women know that that's an option because um, they'll remember and they'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the first thing you would do was, was, would be start the baby registry. And um, like, like Lorraine said, we've used Amazon, we've used other um, websites as well that were very difficult to navigate. So I would definitely suggest doing Amazon. It's nice because if you have your own account, you can go down and make registry. Um, you can, I think you can do two registries at, at once, or if there's like two or three people involved, you can each have a registry going. Um, 
basically you go to the little options bar, find baby registry, select that, and then you proceed to fill it out with the information that the mom gives you. So the way that we did it is we had like one, one point person that kind of walked with the mom. It just saves from confusion and also it starts to build up that relationship of trust with the mom, which is gonna be so important as you walk with her for the next nine months. Like how Joanne was saying, um, she was kind of like, I didn't really have faith that you guys would help me that much, you know, but as you know, she shared, uh, we didn't, we, we treated her like it would be our own, our own sister or daughter. So you're going to create the registry with the point person. Um, and like, uh, Lorraine said, keep it simple. They might want to put a ton of things on it, but just start simple with them. If you, if anybody wants a basic list, Lorraine or I can just, you know, give you a basic list of boy, girl, neutral. And another thing is uh, very practically, they might not have room for all the things you might think a new mom should have or should want. Uh, even a, a very real question for them is, would you like a crib or a pack and play? And that's a, an easy way to, to ask them um, gently because they might not have room for a crib and they might be embarrassed that all they can fit in their room is a pack and play. So kind of, feel them out and see what's going to be the best setup and say, if, if a pack and play is what you'd like, that's great. You know, there's nothing wrong with not having a crib because logistically they might not even have the room for a crib um, or a room for the baby at all. So you might want to be like, we can decorate the room, but they might not even have a special room. So just be you know, a little bit more sensitive to that. It's, it's, it is a little bit different because they are in a, a difficult situation and that's why we're coming to help. Um, another thing would be the address. So we did run into this a few times where, you know, they would say, we're kind of nervous to have all these packages dropped off on our front porch. Somebody might take them and, you know, talk to them about it. See what the best option is. If you need to hold the packages at, at your home or if you need to get them all delivered to your house until the actual shower, just have, you know, some transportation ready as it, it could be difficult for her to transport all that over. That's why we would try to find ways to get the big boxes and big things to their house right away. And Joanne, you know, she was so wonderful. She did literally have a living room and a front foyer, um, probably upstairs too full of boxes until the baby was born, but that was fine for them. They just they just kept that. And and I, you know, with Amazon you can see now they even take pictures of the um, the package that they leave you. So you can trace everything. It's pretty easy now to just leave the packages on the um, front steps. Um, simple questions like, is the, is the mom thinking about breastfeeding? Because those are basic things that they're going to need in a registry. Um, it's okay to kind of ask that. It might be a good conversation. It starts to have the mom understand that this is becoming real. And the sooner that you get this together, it's okay if they're only 12 weeks along. Start having that conversation. Start kind of getting some exciting ideas together. The, the mom starts to light, light up. She start talking about symptoms and the cute little things you can put in. They're so excited. And then once they start getting them, it's even more, it solidifies this pregnancy for them and it starts taking the worry away like Joanne was saying. Um, and, and make sure in the beginning that you ask her, is it okay if we if we share your name? You know, we have a big community who wants to pray for you. We have a big community who wants to send you things. If there's a different name, you know, and we've had women who we call different you know, code names, just out of mm -hmm. respect for them. Um, assure them that their address will be hidden because in Amazon you can do that. And there's uh, some really awesome options they have for, for um, showers now. So go through and look. I think there's options where you can add, um, what was that, Lorraine? You can, people can Multi add in. Yeah, multiple people can, can oh, uh, people can add to the registry. So like you, if you and I are helping create the registry, there's that feature or people can bulk. So if there's a big item, let's say a car seat stroller setup, you know, a few hundred dollars or whatever it is, is say, oh, I don't know if I can only contribute $50. You, it's, there's an easy feature to say, I'm gonna contribute $50 to that. Becky's gonna contribute $50 so you can kind of see it start to go up. So it, it, it's easier than like, oh, Becky, I'm gonna send you a check for $10 or whatever. It just does it automatically. And then if yeah. she doesn't get everything, um, like in other words, if there's an item that, not everything gets contributed towards the total, 
there's the ability to use Amazon gift cards towards it. So we always put those on the gift registry as well. So, and, and we always have some donor, some sometimes anonymous donor that says, what's the balance? And I'm gonna you know pay for the difference of it. So I don't think we've ever had an item that a mom wanted that they didn't get. Exactly, so. exactly. And then there is a feature on Amazon. I don't know if they've changed this since, but once the, the amount is completed, like for the car seat, you have to go in and order it and get that sent there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, check on those big items that people are adding in, and then if it's full, you need to go ahead and order that for her. Um, what else? So, and then, then you're done, you're good, you we've worked it out with her. Now it's time to send it out. And how Lorraine was saying, you know, this is the time to kind of network this out. And I know we've used Facebook a lot. Jim would post something, and we would kind of share it on our pages, and they would go within days. Sometimes these these items would go so quick. And email is another way to get that if you have email lists or however you're connected, word of mouth, if you're just talking to your friends or your sisters or, or people in your church, you know, you can go to your church groups and ask them what they can do. We had a lot of people who would just contribute. They heard a baby shower was coming up and they'd say, hey, we got a package for you. We would never know it was coming. And mm -hmm. we would open it up and it'd be like five handmade blankets with little embroiders, you know, by movers, mm -hmm. something really sweet. And it was amazing because once you do start, you know, networking and, and sharing this need, people would send checks. They would say, hey, can I drop something up to your house? Gifts were coming out of everywhere. It was it was amazing. And so we would have extra things that we know that, you know, that mom already got everything she needed. You don't want to overwhelm her with tons of items. And we it was like a little closet, you know, a little like um, shop in our closet would have extra things okay what is this next month so you'll accumulate things and that's okay because we always more moms who can use this and like uh, I don't know if you touched on this Lorraine but the key is uh, I see Jim so I'm trying to maybe I should wrap it up <laughs> the key is to um, um, I think he distracted me so I can't, I can't remember and I was saying the key is, so that probably was important, but I'm sure it'll all come back. Um, basically, when you're done with the baby registry, it's time to go on to the shower. And you know, the, the point person should continue to walk with her and ask, I think Lorraine did an awesome way one time where she assigned people to different um, like uh, challenges. It was the host, somebody who did the food, the setup, the cleanup decorations, kind of all work together with that. Um, and then, you know, the invites can be tricky. A lot of these moms are coming to you because they don't have anybody in their support system right now. And so they're coming to you because their family's not supporting them. So it's okay to have a bunch of women coming over and supporting her, even if you don't, you know, they don't know you and, and you don't know them. That's pretty much what happened for us, which was always awesome. And that's pretty much all. Give the shower to her the way you would want the shower done for you or for somebody that you love because it it makes such a difference with little things like from um, having it at your own home which we all did they felt so welcome to having like little gift bags or one of the moms made cookies for for baby cookies it really makes a difference so go all out with these moms this is their only shot um, to see that people like us are actually there to help them so I, I probably could go on and on, but I think it's time to move on here. No, no, great stuff. Yeah, thank you, Becky, and, and thank you, Lorraine. Um, we can take any questions or comments if anybody has any. Right now, I'm not actually seeing any. We've got a couple hellos in the question and comment box. We even have a, a one aloha from Hawaii, so aloha. Um, but, if, you know, we've got a bunch of people on, but, you know, you don't have to ask anything. But if you do have any questions, now would be the time to bring them forward. One thing that kind of just jumped into my mind as you were talking there at the end, Becky, was just um, this idea, which is to say, you know, we are out there because of Jesus, right? I mean, that's the reality of it. We, we understand that we are called to go out and to love our neighbor. Right, because we're Christians, because we follow Jesus, we're disciples of Christ. He has um, He has put this in our hearts, right? And so, um, a lot of times we're not we're not saying anything about that. We're just doing it. We're just loving them. We're just reaching out to them. We're just praying for them. Um, but this is an opportunity, I think, in this time as we build the relationship 
it's an opportunity maybe to explicitly say something along those lines. And this is why, because it's for their benefit in terms of building this bridge of trust. Um, some people say, well, you have to actually have a bridge of trust before you can bring up faith um, with somebody. And yeah, there may be some truth in that, but it, there's also truth in that sometimes faith is actually what's going to build that bridge of trust with somebody. And I think this is maybe one of those cases, as you heard Joanne talk about very honestly, sharing how she didn't think we were for real, you know, and that would make sense. That's a sensible kind of thing for her to think because who who's out there just trying to um, bless people like this right if, if not for jesus none of it makes sense so i think if we bring up jesus in that context and say hey i know this might seem strange you know even us being out there i know it might seem strange that we want to just um, bless you with this baby registry and this baby shower um, it's not strange to us because of Jesus, right? Because of Jesus. And to share a little something of our faith that um, that draws us into this. And oftentimes that might be a great opportunity for them to share some of their faith as well and, um, and open up some really great conversations. Um, but I think it's also a way for them to understand why we're doing this and then to earn some of that trust with them so they don't feel maybe um, afraid or, or anxious. Um, also, just one very practical thing. If you don't have um, a, a very big email list. If you're, you don't have uh, much of a presence on social media or anything like that, and those are really the main avenues we use to let people know about the baby shower, and then they hop on, or I'm sorry, the baby registry, and then they hop on the, the, um, the website and they order things from the Amazon gift registry. Um, it, you need to figure out a way to get the word out. So I would say very simply, if you don't have access to those ways of getting the word out, you wanna find somebody who does that you can kind of put in charge of that and just, or to just ask people that you know, will you put this out with the email list that you have? Will you put this out with the social media reach that you have? Um, you can ask even organizations that might um, be favorable to this. Ask your church, right? Would you put this out through the email list? We have a pregnant mom in need who turned away from her abortion appointment. We need some folks to step up and buy some gifts for her. Um, people want to step up in this way. So Again, we, we just wanna make sure that we are trying to problem solve any problem that comes up um, where there's a will, there's a way and the Lord's gonna help us when we're reaching out to help sure. our neighbor in need. So um, he's the one that guides us through all this. We have found some best practices. That's what we're sharing tonight. Um, but that's it um, for me. I don't see, oh, I guess maybe here's one question I see that has come in right before the end. Here it is. It says, how to constructively deal with apathy or when potential baby registry participants suggest they don't need help because the local pregnancy care center already does some of this help. Um, I would say in a situation like that, just, just to remember, well, I'm not sure about um, the apathy part necessarily. I, I'm not sure about that part. If anybody else have, has any ideas about maybe what that, what he means by that question, what this person means there, I'm not exactly sure because they're pretty plugged in once they're saying yes to a baby registry, um, there, there's, I don't, there, we don't deal with apathy really at that point. It's more apathy earlier on um, that you might encounter. So I'm not sure about that part of the question, but in terms of the local pregnancy help center, look, yeah, there are already resources built out, thanks be to God, we always need more of them, um, but there are some great ones in every local community. And so we can hand people off just right over to those local pregnancy help centers, and that's great. But sometimes they might take us up on an offer of a baby registry, baby shower, and we can step in in that way if we if we're willing to, if we have or, or if we have a point person that's willing to take that on that we can hand that off to. You can do it that way as well. It's really something to be discerned in prayer about utilizing baby registries and baby showers. Um, I do think it's a very, very helpful and important tool to be able to offer. So whether you would be the one that would actually be following through and be that point person that's going to walk with that mom afterwards, or if it's going to be another point person that's designated, I think it is important. There may be a local pregnancy help center that does baby registries already, at which point if you have that in your community, then you just need to connect with that point person and you can hand people off in that way. So, um, so there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, so yeah, it's all going to be customized to your local situation. Um, but Becky and Lorraine, any thoughts on any of that? 
Yeah, I would say I think the pregnancy resource centers often are <clears throat> equipped with gently used items. And um, you heard, I thought it was really powerful what Sade said. She said, this isn't a charity. This is the ministry. This is what they do. And so it's really connecting with the person emotionally, not like happy, sad, but like that kind of gut connection that you say, you know, you heard them say, these people love me and I love them. They're my family. That's very different than, okay, I need a pack and play and I need, you know, layouts for the first couple of months, which, which is really in many cases what um, some of the material assistance places do. And they are awesome, awesome, awesome. And they complement this. This is really a gift, right? So this is what you would do with a family member, right? If a family member was in need, apathy to be like, hey, go, you know, go get it yourself or go. Sometimes they don't even know where to go for this. So this is really showering them. You saw the transformation in these testimonies with, I didn't know what to do. I was so scared to, all my needs were taken care of. So there's a real difference in the spirit behind this versus I'm going to go to a place that's going to give me something for my particular need right now. This is a community of people. So that's how what I would say if we're talking about apathy on the part of people that you're going to to engage for support. I would say that's the story. The story is these people are real and they deserve the best. Right. Yeah. And that is they the, they did <clears throat> clarify there. That is what they were talking about. Apathy of Christians wanting to help. So, yeah, thank you for that. And also, um, you know, that is a, a point that, that jumped out to me listening to Sade when she was saying that about, you know, we're not a charity. She was actually quoting what I was saying to her and that I remembered back that moment of the grace of God that um, that I said that. But it was because I sensed in her um, just like, you know, they, they don't want to take any help. A lot of people have an obstacle to wanting to take material help. Right. And so. Um, so that's a way to make it okay by just by just addressing that. And, and that's the way that the Lord did it on that day in the words that came to me were just to say, hey, and just understand, like, this is what we do. Like, we love doing this. This is a blessing for us. You're giving us an opportunity to do something that we want to do. So uh, this is not some, you're not some charity case. Like, we want to bless you. We want to love you. We want to encourage and empower you. Like, this is great for us. So um, putting it that way, you almost are making it like she's doing us a favor, um, mm -hmm. which in a certain sense she is, yeah. right? It is such a joy to walk with these moms in this mm -hmm. way and bless them like this. So um, so that, that's just another thing to maybe keep in mind. And um, one final um, question that came in here is um, one that is, what happens with the relationship after the shower? Which is a great question. And I know it's not really necessarily in the scope for what we have tonight, but it would be great maybe to just hear a little bit along those lines. And then maybe we can plan maybe um, some advanced trainings in the future where we get more into kind of like postpartum help and, and going forward. Um, but but anything, Be Becky, anything that you want to share on that? I know that um, that you've been with moms um, through the birth and, and postpartum and continuing on now um, with with um, some of the moms over the past couple of years that we've encountered on the sidewalk. Um, any any just helpful hints or things you want to share along those lines? Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing is that they almost always want to share with you. Like, so they would be texting it. Like a lot of the moms are, you're you're with them in those last few weeks before birth and they're like, today might be the day. You know, they don't always have a ton of support to go to. They're not getting support from other places. So you become like one of their close friends and you're walking along with them. So when they have the baby, you're like, I want to come see the baby, you know, and they want you to come see the baby. And we got to go see somebody in the hospital that was, you know, pre-COVID. I don't know what it's like now, but um, it's so amazing to be with them. So the ones now, you know, what we've done is, you know, we'll send them a meal, like um, they get home from the hospital, send them a quick meal. So, you know, like give them a quick phone call. I mean, they don't have a lot of people surrounding them. So, I mean, like Jim said, it's, it's a whole nother episode, but definitely keep that um, same connection that they still need you. You know what I mean? There's a whole phase in post that lasts for quite a bit and, and they're not getting help. You know, sometimes they're like getting on the bus, trying to get to the doctor's appointment with the two weeks. So, you know, be with them in that time. They're going to need you as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a powerful friendship, a very unique kind of friendship that blossoms out, out of all of this where um, they may not have anybody else that they can turn to in their life that really cares for them 
um, with the purity of intention that, that we're caring for them and willing their good and really just looking to seek the best for them and, and to bless them and to figure out, okay, what are your needs? How can we empower you? How can we help you? Um, how can we just, you know, be, be, have a good friendship in this way? And so, you know, that's not something that I've been a part of because these are women that we're talking about. It, it would be, be probably odd if it's a man that is the point person following up and, and having, uh, you know, these friendships. But, um, but that is the beauty of having lots of different people involved, finding someone that that is something that they, um, a part, uh, something that they really enjoy doing, something that um, they're great at, to really walk alongside these moms and be friends, um, long-term friendships with them. Um, so it's very, very, it's a very, very important piece. Anything you want to add on any of that, Lori? I think you said it very well that it becomes a friendship and you're really intertwined in their lives. And <clears throat> it's really critical to build on that trust that they know that you're there for the long haul. And especially when you're involved early on in the pregnancy, they know that it's really just kind of a natural outcome. And I think getting them to that point, and then it's a celebration because it is overwhelming once baby comes. So there's a whole another set of psychological needs that they kind of encounter that they might not have even expected. And the very reason that they probably were in the situation that they were even considering abortion is that they don't have a network or the network that they do have is not necessarily um, encouraging them or affirming them in this choice. So, you know, they'll, they'll call and ask questions about first time moms. So it's really just a beautiful friendship. And what a grace to us that are embracing life to get to be part of that story and to really be able to share the fruits and to see the fruits that God is has blessed them with it's it, you know it doesn't end with the baby's birth it just it just begins it begins a whole friendship and relationship with them so it's so important yeah yeah praise god well thank you so much uh becky and lorraine for being on um tonight uh greatly appreciated i know we are a little bit over um the hour so uh we can go ahead and um and wrap it up here but thank you everybody who um who's out there thank doing you. all the good work in, in your local communities um, remember, none of this happens if we don't go out and encounter these moms on the sidewalk. We've got to show up. We've got to show up and we've got to really do what we can to help build up the sidewalks outside of our local abortion centers in our communities. All right, the next um, training, the next one we're going to have is going to be next month, November 19th. The topic is going to be how to achieve full sidewalk coverage year round. Um, again, watch for an email invitation in the coming days that will be sent out. Um, to you to register, let other people know about it. Hopefully we can get more and more people um, to know about this good work and to be plugging into this good work. Um, so that's it for tonight. Unless anybody else, does anyone have any final comments they want to throw in? All set. Okay. Perfect. So, <laughs> so we'll wrap it up then. Let's keep advancing in love of God and neighbor and helping to build out the sidewalks in front of abortion centers in our local communities all by God's grace, all for God's glory. Uh, come Lord Jesus, God bless you. Amen. Amen.